I know it's uh, a little bit of a break time, but I'm going to get started. We've got a thumbs up. I'm Joel Ferry. Um, I farm here in Box Elder County, just down the road in West Korea. Um, my family, we run, uh, it's all irrigated ground, and we got some dry land range, but we run uh, Calvert, we have a feed yard, and we grow all of our crops. We grow a lot of corn, uh, grains, and wheat, barley, and a lot of alfalfa and grass days. Um, so, cover crops. Uh, our company's J.Y. Ferry & Son. Cover crops have been growing them. I've done some different programs with Utah State over the past few years. This last year, I did quite, or a little bit more. I planted about 160 acres. Um, and first, I want to focus on soil samples. So important. I wanted to know for myself. I've heard, I've gone to these classes before, and I've heard all sorts of things about the benefits of cover crops. How awesome they are, how they're going to save you all sorts of money. And fertilizer, and you can do all these great things with them. Um, when I did these tests with Utah State, I did some small plots, you know, small fields, 10, 20 acres here or there. And it's hard to see because it would just be one year and then I'd rotate out. It. And so I didn't, I, you know, I'm having a hard, I was having a hard time seeing the long term benefit to it. I wouldn't graze it, we'd just let it uh, go, kill in the winter, and we dig it up in the spring. Um, this year, well, let me, let me talk about some of my fields. So, where we're at, our pH, this is really hard to see. I apologize, I thought we'd have a small room and a bigger screen. But my, my average pH is around 8, 8.1. And most of these fields that I've got, uh, you can see organic matter is covered right around 2, 2 and a quarter percent. So it's decent. These are fields that are near the feed jars that have manure over the years. That's been a concern with the phosphorus levels, so we've tried to um, apply less phosphorus and just focus on crops that are going to consume some of that, and I think the cover crops do a good job of that. Um, like, if you look, uh, my phosphorus levels hover around 50 parts per million, which is on the high end, but not horrible. Um, and so I, I really, I personally pay a lot of attention to my um, soil samples. So this year I, did, I planted four fields in cover crops, um, and I did each one a little bit different. I wanted to test and see what's going to work best for me. So I've got four fields. Almost all the samples are the same. You know, uh, I like to see, you know, push and see what I can do with my, my hands. Um, so down here, we, we have pretty good corn ground. So on my samples, I usually call for 240 to 300 bushel corn. And then I fertilize accordingly. Um, so here, you know, it's calling for a lot of nitrogen. Like this sample um, here. Calling for 325 units of nitrogen and 100 units of element sulfur, and that's it. My phosphorus, all my micros are there. So, pretty good ground. Um, so, uh, what I did, I, I, um, I had four, uh, four different fills, and fills three and four planted about the same time, so I lumped them together. So, the first fill, 48 acres, I planted it on August 2nd. So, we had a little bit of a late wheat harvest. We harvested the end of July, planted it. Um, what I ended up seeing is I grazed 140 head for, 120, for, for 21 days on that field, which is 2,940 head days at a, let's say, an average of $22 AUM. That gave me a net or a, a revenue on that field just from the grazing of 1,940. Field two was 51 acres. Planted it a week later, and I did not graze it. It was a field that didn't have a fence around it, and so I said, I'll plant this field. I'm not going to graze, I want to see what it's going to do to the soil. Just leave it alone. Something different. And then my fields three and four were planted quite a bit later. Um, I planted on August 28th. Uh, <clears throat> so we started, you know, it started cooling down a little bit at night, so it was still plenty warm. But it was really interesting. The growth on those fields was significantly less. Um, and so you see on those on 68, I only got 140 head for 11 days. Ago. So my grazing value was half, almost half of what it was on that first field. And that's, you know, for me, it's important to see what, what will work and what won't. In my mix, just so you guys know, what I planted was uh, I planted uh, the, uh, tiller radish, I planted some uh, purple top turnip, we planted some um, Austrian pea. I planted, uh, oh, what is it? Um, what's the leafy? I'm pulling a blank for this. 
What's that up here? Collard greens. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it was awesome. Um, I've got some pictures. I, I didn't know I was going to do this presentation, so I had to take pictures. I got a couple, but kind of end of the season pictures where it's already been raised off and stuff. Um, but anyway, so we, we raised it. Uh, you know, I had some decent results. I mean, we make a little bit of money off of it. And that's what I want to focus on. My, me personally, my background's in banking. I was a banker for a number of years and I came back to the farm because I love farming more than I love banking. Um, and so I focus on the numbers. I want to know what my results are going to be, you know. Um, I don't want to be a hobby farmer. I want to be able to make a living, but I want to enjoy what I do too. So um, I put together this budget. This is on my own, my own experience, and then I can learn from this budget on what I can do to improve for next year. So um, I planted 159 acres. You can see that top here. Um, my seed seed costs 10 bucks an acre, total 16.25. So I'll prep. Um, I, ha I do have a no-till, and I use it all the time, I, I, almost all the grain or wheat that I plant is no-till. In this case, um, you can see here my fertilizer, I didn't, I didn't put any fertilizer down, uh, commercial fertilizer. I put down um, an organic fertilizer. Uh, I used a lot of biosolids and other fertilizers, manure, and so I used that instead of putting down a commercial fertilizer on those fields. Um, so my cost for fertilizer was, was zero. But what I did do, uh, my soil prep, I used a, we call sunflower or multi tool, just to disturb the top surface of the soil to make a good seed bed, because there was a lot of stubble. In previous years, I've known to it directly into my wheat stubble, and I just haven't seen the results that I wanted to see as far as the, you know, it growing, coming out, growing out of the ground, and really taking off. It would be uh, where my combine had gone through and left a lot of, um, you know, fodder, the, the, the chaff, and the, from the build, almost nothing would grow in those, in those strips. It either you know, covered it and blanketed it so that it had a hard time growing. Um, you know, and our soils down here, we have a, a pretty heavy soils. Um, they call it a silt alone, but it's, it's got a lot of clay to it, um, and, you know, relative to high, higher pH, about eight, like I showed you. And so some of those crops have a hard time getting going. So um, for me, the soil prep paid off that 18 bucks an acre would cost me totally worth it. Um, I estimated my growth cost is about the same. So my, my personally, uh, well, in watering, so that's a critical part. So we're flood irrigation down here. Um, I, asked, I, I watered this three times, especially on that stuff I planted the 1st of August. So I watered the first, right after I planted, I watered it up, and I watered the 15th, and then we did one watering in September. Um, and so, so for me, it cost me about 58 bucks. If I had to fertilize, estimate 50 or 60 units of nitrogen, a little bit of phosphorus maybe. On these fields, I wouldn't put any phosphorus. But um, my cost estimated at 30 bucks an acre for my fertilizer. So, um, you know, I would have been into it if I would have had to fertilize, I would have been into 80, 88 bucks an acre. Now, um, in this case, the grazing revenue, I only grazed 108 acres, estimated that I made 27 bucks an acre off my grazing. And this is, for me personally, this is where I have the most room for improvement, is to improve my grazing. Um, and that's going to be, one, by planting a little bit earlier. I plant everything around, or before the 1st of August, that last week of July when I get my weed off, I'm going to have much better results. That's what I learned this year. Um, and so my grazing revenue, I, I, I can see it tripling even from where it was. You know, so on that same amount of acres, I can triple my income off my grading. Um, luckily this year the NRCS participated and that's why it's so important to partner with the NRCS on these type of projects. Now it's not available everywhere, but our office had that option and I was, you know, I know the office, I work with them, and they said, hey, you know, we're doing this project, there's some participation, sign up for it. So yeah, that sounds awesome. So I did it. And that really helped I me. Mean, that's what saved my bacon this year on it, on the cover project. So if you see here, my total revenue is 12,000 bucks for my total expenses are nine. So my net income from these cover crops is about 20 bucks an acre. So not a lot. It can improve significantly if I, if I uh, manage my grazing a little bit better, my planting, and focus on getting that in the ground, getting it growing. Um, but, and then, you know, if you take out that NRCS 
uh, assistance, you know, I would have lost 40 bucks an acre on this bill. And so the hard, the, the thing that I'm really curious about long term is what is the dollar amount value that these cover crops add to my ground? How are they going to help me in the future? You know, because um, it's it's really neat. I mean, to turn the cattle out, and watch them just take off into it. But if it's an extremely expensive source of feed for those cattle, it's not going to work. For them, you know, um, doing things that are neat, you can only do that once or twice, and then you're done. Right? So you've got to you've got to really focus on profitability on the the um, on the budget of what we're doing. Um, let's see. So my observations in running cover crops this year: one, early planting will improve forage growth. Um, oh, and so. Uh, and you saw my plant dates, right? So planting it earlier is going to help me. Number two, I waited because I we had such a warm fall this year. I waited until December to turn my cattle into it. And so my my um, that uh, uh, waiting that delay in, in going into the field to graze it really hurt me. I had to leave a lot of the um, the radish or the turnip stayed in the ground because it froze. Cows just couldn't eat it anymore once they they froze solid all the way through, and so I would have gotten a lot more head days if I would have gone in say the 15th of November, because we didn't even get a killing frost on Thanksgiving yet. And so, and, and a lot of these, I mean, you get you know 25 degrees, they're still growing, they don't die. And so, uh, my second observation is, if I turn my cattle in a little bit earlier, I'll get a lot better utilization of the grain. Um, and because at first they, you know. My own cattle have never raised cover crops before. So they ate all the tops off and then they went to the corner and started bellowing at me, looking for some more feed. They didn't know, you know, they didn't know they could pick those out of the ground either. They learned, but it took them a few days to catch on to that. Um, the different seed mixes. So when I turned my cattle in there, they focused on the grasses first. They didn't go after all the grasses and the other, um, you know, the uh, like he was in the other thing that They wanted to eat all the volunteer wheat and um, the grasses around the field and that kind of stuff first. So um, the mix, things that I'll do different next year, I'm gonna put a, probably an oat variety into my mix. I didn't put any grass in my mix, but I figured there's enough volunteer wheat out there. Um, let's see. And the different seasons, because every year I've planted something different. For me, Austrian peas don't work, it's too hot. They grew about six inches and just stopped growing and nothing. Whereas um, there's other species like the uh, chickpea or the, um, I'll probably mix in some sorghum sudan in my mix this next year. Give it a try. Um, <clears throat> now for me, and I can't you know, say enough about the NRCS and the help they gave me and the guidance and um, financially making this thing feasible. Very important, um, you know. I, th I think long term, these these types of programs improve our cell health. They need, to, you know, financially they need to be feasible in order for them to work. Um, you know, we can't continually mine our soils either. There's a there's a balance that we as as um, stewards of the land have to have to find. Um, and finally, <coughs> graze as many of those acres as possible. You know, you think about it, those cows are returning the nutrient back to the soil after they digest it, it's going back. And so, and for me, when I had gone into graze, most of those plants had gone dormant, they were done. They were just gonna rot over winter. And so by getting that, um, you know, you saw at 50 of my acres I planted, I didn't even graze. So those types of things can really help, I think, in uh, having a successful cover crop program. And based on my results this year, um, I was really happy with them. I think the, uh, the cattle did really well grazing those those plants, and at a critical time of year when feed can get short, November into December for me, that was important, to have that extra source of feed, especially this year now that we've got a lot of snow. I mean, it, it really gave me an extra couple weeks of grazing. Um, let's see, that's it. I mean, we grew some monster turnips and radishes, so that was after they were done grazing. We've all the cows, you see the cows that are grazing in the background, they've been in here for about 10 days when Anyway, I put questions on here, but I'm supposed to wait until the very end before we answer any questions. So that's what I have. Thank you.
Okay, can you hear me? I think so. I get loud on my nerves. So I'm James Willis uh, from Coconut, Wyoming, and we also farm in Lake Town, Utah. Um, it's good to come over here and see you guys got winter for a change. <laughs> Those are my brothers. We run operation, the three of us, the family operation, uh, mainly cattle. We run 1,800 head of other cows, and then we farm a little on the side, raising a lot of hay, grass hay, alfalfa, and uh, oats, and moth barley. And the last few years, well, about five years ago, I wanted to help my soil out, and I took an interest in cover crops. So we started harvesting our oat hay, and then at the end of July, we go in and I broadcast some turnip seed and let it come up. And then my intent was just to leave it in the ground, let it settle over winter, and let the microbes eat on it, make the soil healthier. But then got noticed and it, uh, you know, made a lot of heat, a lot of growth, even down to 12, 15 degrees, or even colder. It stays green and makes a lot of feed. And so then I've started changing things up a little bit because we have to feed all those dang cows something. So what I've started doing is planting along with my oats in the spring, I just put in all my seed right then. And my recipe is 70 pounds of oats, 30 pounds of peas, 3 pounds of turnips, 2 pounds of collard greens, a pound of clover, and a pound of kale and also some fertilizing at seeding. This is a picture of, uh, so we harvested that in end of July and got 3.8 tons of the acre of dry matter. So this is now in September, October, and that's my regrowth. You can kind of see the oaks didn't come back very good. But look at all the vegetation, that be your turnips, collard greens. And some of that stuff was uh, almost knee high. And then the bulbs were getting really big too. Some, those are kind of hard to see. We took a few soil, took some digs out of the ground and it showed just with one year that, that piece would have been plowed up. Well, I sprayed the ground up, took it out of hay, and that was the first year of cover crop. Uh, already starting to get good forest soil, good root mass, and it just been planted in the spring versus our test with some old native grass soil, and the, uh, the soil was near as forest, and the roots were big, and it was kind of soft down. That's a picture of it. In mid-November, the cattle have been on there about three weeks, and it's 24 acres, and we got 180 pair on there. Just a comparison, we put them on uh, the same, the same acre field. Uh, it lasted five days without alpha, but it was 20 inches tall. And in this piece, they were on for over three weeks, and there's still a lot there. They'll come in and eat the tops off, and then they'll come in and my cows, it's taken a few years, but they learn how to root up, they'll start biting those turnips and stuff off, they'll see their teeth marks in it, and they'll stay there forever and just keep eating. So the turnips, they create, i found that they create a high quality feed and also good for the soil. I'm still working on this doing all kinds of experiments on soil samples uh, to see how I am helping the soil. And using alfalfa, I'm coming right out of alfalfa and going into this for about three years. I was going to show I've got some drone footage here in a minute if we can get it to work. Uh, we've started using some areas of our farm just strictly for grazing, and I'm going to show that to you. I'll take in those figures. 
There on the right, you can see, shows us bound the first crop of oat hay off the, it, it's the turnips, it's my cocktail, and that's what went over three and a half ton the acre. And then there you can see uh, Aaron helped me. We did a test. And over here, I know you guys raised a lot of pounds to the acre. Um, but in Bear Lake, I, in Rich County, I think the average is maybe four, four and a half pounds to the acre of hay. Well, that bill, when we did our little test, produced about 16,000 pounds an acre which I thought for our country was phenomenal. No wonder the cows stayed there and ate so long. There's a lot of beef. Uh, there on the right, it's really hard to see. These cows have access to this 24 acre field of turnips and stuff. And then I always like to, if you can, have like some barley stubble or some dry grass, because they like to go back and forth uh, to make it work better for their diet. If they're just eating turnips and that stuff, they really get the sports. They need a little fiber. There's some in late November, the cows have started rooting them up, and they'll go back and eat those uh, until they freeze and can't chew on them anymore. Right here is something I learned this year. Um, and it's hard to see, but on the right it's showing a kale root. And I'm going to up my rate on my kale because of what I saw. That kale puts down a big old tap root, like bigger than I thought of. And it was the only one that was penetrating my heart pan. And that root was cleared out through the heart pan about an inch in diameter still. And so I'm hoping that root will decompose, you know, through the winter and I'll have an open place there to help start breaking up compaction. Whereas the turnips, they seem to start growing flat and start coming out of the ground. I, they don't seem to really want to break up hard compaction, but, but the kale root really did. There's a picture of some, some of our turnips and the kale. But there's some after we haul the hay, we like to leave a little stubble. Then we'll turn the water back on and let it grow until the cows come home in September and October and graze it. Some more stubble and turnips. Uh, that's good residue. You've got a little oak residue and turnips, and that'll help hold your dirt down. You don't have problems with soil erosion with the wind and stuff that we get over there. And that's my last slide. We're gonna, if we can get this to work, I want just to show some pictures I took with the drone on a pasture that used to grow um, kochia, June grass, sage grub, just all kinds of weeds. And we put a couple pivots on it and we start growing I have some ground to see out here. This is what it used to be like. Just dirt and the dust would flow all summer. And so we had water rights and pumps nearby. And that is uh, just my cocktail there, you know, peas, oats, turnips, collards. Um, we have 100 acres of this that we pasture, 265 head of yearling heifers um, from the 15th of June till the middle of September. And then we move them to the meadows. And then <clears throat> it still makes fall feed for the big cow to come in and eat on. It, this stuff makes a lot of feed. And I just leave the pivots running all summer. And, but our ground's a little sandy, so we don't have problems with them tromping. And they just go in there and eat on that stuff, and they love it. I didn't crash the drone this day, I took that footage out. 
<laughs> well, the students see some green. Forgot what it looked like. So that, I guess, to my conclusion, I started out using turnips or stuff like that for cover crop to help make healthier soil. But I found that it makes really good feed. It's great for grazing, and I'm still learn. I'm still really into it and trying to learn a lot how to make it even better for our operation. That's all I have. I think I'm proud of time. <laughs>